If you ask me, I think, if you were to ask me, that it would be pretty cool if there was some way in which I could just be paid to essentially just sit right where I was before I walked in here and just keep smoking the guind and just listen to more music. And if that was somehow like the primary source of income for me, I think that'd be a really happy existence where it was like, yeah, everyone's just watching to, they're just paying to watch you smoke weed and listen to music. And I don't even want like the interaction. I don't even want it to be where it's like interacting with the chat. Mm -mm. <laughs> like, <laughs> that's I don't, too much That's work. too much responsibility and that's going to ruin the high. It's, it's like, I'm thinking somewhere more along the lines of, it is live. Don't get me wrong. I'm not going to sell it. Like, who wants to watch he was gonna like oh watch pre-recorded footage of someone getting high that's fucking lame as shit is it not <laughs> that's pretty lame. that just sounds inhuman you know mm -hmm. so i don't want that i don't want to rob them of the 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 that false sense of like i'm a part of this because it's happening here and i'm someone who's experiencing it while it's happening where it has that extra weight to it. everyone's like damn i should consume Very this. Alien of you. and think about it you know it's hard it's like you know think about this you know you're watching a stream right and it's like, oof, I got to get out of here. But the stream's ending in 30 minutes. I might as well just watch. I might as well just stay for the next 30 minutes because yeah, I was already minutes. part of the first part yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it's, that, it's that I got a mentality. <laughs> so pre-recorded footage would be totally douchey. But I'm thinking, like, if there's just some way where it's like, again, no chat. They can have a chat room. They can have a chat room. Okay, listen, they can talk about what's going on. I'm not going to be looking at the chat, you know? So they can have a private conversation. But the thing that's drawing <laughs> their conversation is just me smoking that's half the appeal they get the chat they get no the talk whatever yeah <laughs> i mean and they, and also, where can you get that kind of inside access it's actually probably the most raw form of communication because i won't be reading it so they can just be tearing me apart viciously but there'll be no like reaction so it'll just be never ending you know and again it, it, it won't be pre-recorded it won't be posted so we know no it'll be it'll be in. So it's like get there get get in there while you can kind of moment mm -hmm. you know it's only gonna last for so long however long however however for however long i decide to smoke right well, well luckily for for anyone who might join in <laughs> when you say one more song and seven songs yeah. pass i think they'll, I they'll, really they'll, they'll get their money's worth I was for this, enjoying this listening show to big, those big sean videos are good man oh uh, that one song part was fucking terrible which one i don't know you changed it before you put on um when you said when, when, we, when we put that one on the one before you changed because it was fucking terrible. That. I don't know if you thought that was terrible, but I thought it was <sighs> Dude, fucking was so atrocious. Bad. I don't have any bad songs. I'm just not. I don't know, I was the only song you changed. Let every DJs. other song play through except bless. I love how you skipped through Drake's part. That's yeah, hilarious. Dude. I skipped through every chorus. I didn't want to hear, it, and I skipped over his verse too. I was like, I just want to hear Big Sean go. Um, before bounce back's not a bad song. What are you talking yeah, about? That song's lame that as song shit. Dude. That song kicks ass. No, I did change it halfway through. Like it wasn't the movie. It's not that it. good. No, because it can make me think of that fucking um, what's the Big Sean Post Malone song? Wolves, I think. Yeah, I kept saying hung like a wolf. That's definitely not that one. It's a different song <laughs> about wolves. Dude, remember I told you Bo was like, dude, we should do a metal. Am I the only person who hears the metal potential in this song? Here's the metal potential. It's got you, heavy you got, bass. He's like, I don't usually like rap music, but you got to check out this one <laughs> Post Malone fucking Big Sean song. Tell me there's not rock potential. It's like, dude, you're a lunatic. First off, I think probably of all different mediums, like I think taking a country song and turning it into a fucking, you know, orchestral fucking performance yeah. might be tough. A little. I think blending rock to rap's pretty fucking on the nose. The only reason Aerosmith even had their second breath of fresh air was because they decided to become. A, what if we just blended rap and rap, rock, rock and rap, and it worked? And then, uh, you know, uh, I think, I think that there, was a fluke. I and think then it was your guy a comes in there and he's like, "Can you believe that? The, can you believe that these songs? Can you believe that there's like a metal? It's it, it, almost like there's metal <laughs> in rap music. Almost like that's a thing that could happen." I don't know, dude. I think I think I think that Aerosmith thing was a one-time thing. Aerosmith was a one-time thing. I don't yeah. know, man. I, that, they sold they sold that shit on a toothbrush. So I think it was pretty <laughs> successful. What you they say? were like, they said they sold that shit on a toothbrush. They, really? they were like, do you want to wake up to Detroit Rock City, or do you want to wake up to you know rock rap history? Run DMC and Aerosmith. They should have changed the name of the song to Rap This Way. That would have been a little that cooler, cool. I think. Instead of, that would have been way cooler. Can you give me <laughs> so fucking so lame, so so lame. dude? He's the worst. That fucking Steven Tyler sucks, and that one fucking Chrissy DeStefano uh, clip where he's talking about how his dad saw Steven Tyler in like a city in New York, and he went up to him and was like, "Okay, Bon Jovi," and walked past him. <laughs> is the funniest thing in the world because amazing. Either a if he thinks it's actually Bon Jovi and shows how meaningless Steven Tyler really is and what his impression on culture is, uh -huh. or He's just trying to insult him, and if that's the case, either way, you know for a fact Steven Tyler went home and cried. He probably didn't even go home and cry. He probably cried there. <laughs> he 
he's like, uh, he seems like a very I, emotional, like flapping myself. of the hands crier where he's like patting himself with the wind. He's like, oh my God, I <laughs> yeah, just, I'm sorry. Yeah. yeah. But he did give us Liv Tyler, and that was pretty cool for like 20 years. Um, yeah. I think Liv Tyler is, yeah. Wow, you're really contributing a lot to this. Not only did you bring up the fucking you brought, you're the one who approached the whole fucking bow dances like wolves thing, and every time I tossed it back to you, you just give me a one word, yeah. Yeah, I didn't have much of a conversation going with that. I was just bringing up a one little fact so I could. Interesting, yeah. man. So much for like uh, I don't know a conversation. Also, even if you didn't have that to say, how about how about you just adapt to the conversation when it gets tossed back? To you, how about you say something? I did say something. I said, "Yeah, Liv Tyler." Right. You know what the problem is. I was listening. To, I wanted to listen to our episodes to see how we sound now versus episodes X amount of time ago. So I just threw on a random one today, and it was the David Duchovny one. And I'm so fucking irritating in that episode, saying, dude. So I'm just fine. like, I'm like, so, I'm so fucking, in my I, head again. I think there was something in that thing that was said earlier about that guy who was talking about a way in which people would pay just to watch him potentially smoke pot. Yeah, yeah let's get back to that conversation. I think that'd be good though, because it's like right now we're doing is this thing right here where it's us talking, or more so me talking and you existing. Yeah, okay, to the occasionally side of me. being there. <laughs> um so since we, we had that going on and that's current our current outlook on that one is youtube being like mm, fuck you yes you your views you're actually you actually have less views now than you did five in an hour ago they're just they're magically gone fuck you fuck you <laughs> so since that's going on that's not necessarily kicking ass i'm thinking that there might have been something and maybe instead of doing that i should just you know really pursue the more passion project of it. pivot <laughs> pivot one might say on a podcast occasionally to pivot and perhaps, you know, again, do that thing that guy mentioned earlier about just listening. To, and again, you think like maybe just the chat, like have some sort of a capability where they can like at least request music. It's like, well, I'm not, I'm, I already said, I'm not <laughs> looking at the chat. the chat. <laughs> so maybe, maybe there's some sort of, you know, one of those tech gurus out there, right? One of those wizards of a computer who could work in some sort of a thing where it's like, you know, after a certain amount of money is donated per thing, you can then request songs that way where it's like an automated process perhaps to not, you know, ruin the whole... Everyone says like the viewer-streamer relationship. I'm thinking more of the me relationship versus the observer relationship. It's not much more... It's not me to you. Mm. It's more you guys to yourselves. <laughs> Think of it as a zoo. When you go to the zoo, do you talk to the gorillas? Sure. Do they talk back to you? <laughs> no. <not> usually. <laughs> Only sometimes. The penguins might be swimming. Do they actually... Are they, uh, the whale that swims... Think about every movie ever made. They, they go to an aquarium, right? What happens? The whale swims up to the fucking glass mm. or the dolphin or something. It's usually like, like the bottom of a whale in some mm. shitty movie. All I can think of is that dumb movie with Owen Wilson... Where that, um, where they were like basically doing like, what if we did like a family version of the Elephant Man with the little boy, and we just <laughs> made it where instead of having it where like the person overcomes anything, it was just really like, look at me, this is this is this should pull tug at your heartstrings, <laughs> and it was really no one saw because it looked like a piece of shit movie. What if we did one of those kind of things? I'm thinking about that. Remember the trailer that big moment where like the with, like the whale's underbelly swimmed up to the glass, and the kids like, wow, looking at it's like it's every, it's every movie ever with an aquarium, okay? Yep, yep. One of those kind of relationships is what I'm saying. One of those more so. Less of the whole, you know, oh, hey, guys. Oh, blah, 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 blah. None of that. None of that artificial nonsense, right? That's me talking to a camera. That's not real. That's mm -hmm. not cash money, right? Mm -hmm. What is cash money is me just having money tossed at me without me. I can't, again, you're thinking like, well, at the very least, you'll get notified when someone donates. So you can say, oh, thank you. No, 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 no. Just emptily, emptively and passively going into my... I don't even know well, if the camera's on. Well, it's better that way, too, because, like, realistic, if you're going to donate, do you really want to get accolades? What's the point exactly. of donating? Exactly. Then, then I'm going to lose my identity of self. Yeah. Not, not, and not you're breaking the illusion. Exactly. exactly. You have to ignore it's it. Otherwise, it's not the genuine. the most raw way of consuming something, right? Everything it's else is through this. If that's, everyone's complaining how, like, people have this YouTube personality, right? Mm -hmm. That's because they're interacting and acknowledging you. I'm not going to acknowledge you. It's going to become an entire thing. Where Think about it. They're just going to make the Truman Show. It's like the most famous person in the world doesn't know they're famous. <laughs> it's fucking genius. <laughs> I can just smoke pot and listen to music. And of course, I mean, you'd have to think about it as far as like, you know, the, the I guess the playing the music, right? Does that, who, who would handle that? Again, I think that responsibility would then be put onto those people, right? Where again, mm. I just continue with my thing without any <laughs> thought or anything. So then you people decide how it's possible to just have music played every freely, freely everywhere, you know? How about instead of you even playing the music, you play the music for your benefit, but you don't actually don't you don't stream it. the music, okay. so it's just them watching you smoke <laughs> yeah, yeah, in right. silence. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. It needs That's... to be the most separated form of art that it can possibly be. Well, but then again, I feel like if you were at a zoo they, and they had speakers, you you could also hear what was going on. I mean, also when you're at the zoo, you can kind of hear the animals making their noises, you know. Okay. I'm sure. really holding on to this zoo and you're, right, you're right. You're right. I'm really into this zoo idea. <laughs> I don't know. I think there's potential there. All right. Twenty four hour live stream. Every day, non every day, and so that means that's that's how real it is too. 
Think about that. That's how they build up anticipation. Instead of going live and you know stopping being live and going live and stopping and sending a notification and then I've been like, ah, fuck it, I'm busy. I'll, I'll catch the next one. Mm -hmm. You never stop being live. And people are gonna be afraid to leave because they don't exactly. want to miss it. They don't want to miss but, no, out. But I leave the room. <laughs> Is he coming back? Is he coming they back? Don't know when? And there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to it at all. And there's no notification. There's no notification. And you can't no, notify no, it, them no, when you get back at all. there because they can't <laughs> chat with you. You can't chat with them. No. So there's going to be these weird, like, fucking pages on Twitter and shit where they're, like, posting updates. They're like, guys, fucking, he's, he's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. He's back. <laughs> and those people are going to have notifications exactly, between them for and those people. text yeah, exactly. uh, there's groups be, and everything. Yeah, there's going to be clips being uploaded every single day, documenting it from random accounts, talking about, like, what happened today and the weird stuff that was going on. Now, are you going to be aware that this is being recorded. You're going to be oblivious of the fact that this is being recorded. I'm aware that it's being recorded, I guess. But you're going to act oblivious the whole time? Well, I'll never acknowledge the success that it obviously inevitably breeds. So you're going to have the camera somewhere you can't ever actually like make eye contact. So you I'm can't thinking actually it has look to be some sort it. of a fucking. Again, this should be invested for by. I'm not, I don't want to put any of my own nut into this thing, you know? <laughs> I'm thinking that cheddar should be more communal. Yeah, that's fair. And it should be where there's like. I don't know. Let's say, for instance, a whole entire videographer crew. None, none of people. It's like, almost like a reality show where there's like at least a, like p p picture any rom com from the two thousands, right? What was the guy's job in the movie? He was a director of live television in some way. Either. Oh yeah, was that, that was sports. a trend. It was every guy in the world. He he worked in one of those rooms where he was like, uh, camera six, yeah, and he had camera the fourteen. Piece. Yep. Oh my god, camera three's down. <laughs> Fucking, we don't we don't have the dunk cam. We don't have the dunk cam. It's crazy. And then everyone's like, he's just... Roll B footage. Roll B footage, exactly, right? Cuts the interview. <laughs> what did LeBron say? <laughs> and then it was awesome. You know the best part, too, though, is is the 2000s, a lot of movies involve, like, like think about, like... Uh, Dude, a lot of movies all How to Lose all a Guy that. in 10 yeah, Days, the right? They go, to, they go to the Knicks game, uh -huh. and it's like, damn, the Knicks, New York, nice. And it's like, but it's fucking, like, Nate Robinson Knicks. It's just the Knicks of nobodies, and it's just like... <laughs> I was going to say, who's Nate wow. Robinson? Nate Robinson's the douchebag that one of the Paul brothers knocked out. Oh, cool. So that's his legacy. So, yeah, legacy. Guy hey. who's like five foot flat on the Knicks. All right, legacy. The guy who Matthew McConaughey gives like an A to and got knocked out by one of the Paul brothers. It's pretty legacy. Yeah, legacy. <laughs> All right, legacy. But I'm thinking something like that where it's one of those guys who's like directing it or maybe a Ned Harris type, right? Mm -hmm. To allude back to the Truman Show. Nice. And it's just they have like. Cameras from every Do you mean angle. Ed Harris type, as in like the way Ed Harris appears to be in real life, or like that creepy fucking character he's playing in the Truman Show? Because that character is not at all the kid you said <laughs> that was in all those movies in the early two thousands. Those are two very different types of people. Right, that's right. One's the nineties interpretation. One's the two thousands interpretation of that of that job. Um, <laughs> I one's think much darker than the like other one. Ed Harris would be good, uh -huh. and like dressing like Ed Harris. Mm, so the style and pizzazz, <laughs> but probably more of the attitude of like an Ashton Kutcher, Gerard Butler. Fucking probably Josh Dumal. I feel like probably played that movie once where he was that guy. That's what I always say. Boy, I gotta give me a buddy like Josh Dumal. <laughs> yeah, I know. Josh Dumal's <laughs> some special kind of dumb. Special. Yeah. And in fact, he's in the new Transformers movie that we saw in that thing. Yeah, what he, the fuck is that about? You guys can't get fucking Sam Witwicky back, but we're going to have Josh Dumal. I don't Dumal, understand who, how it's like he's not even he's with Fergie it? anymore. He's still getting job opportunities. Yeah, I thought people were like, get that guy with Fergie. He's cool. Yeah, He's with get, Fergie. He has they to they be were cool. like, let's see if we can hire that moron. And maybe maybe Fergie will show up. That'd be cool. And everyone's <laughs> like, yeah, who gives a shit? It's a small part anyway. <laughs> and then Josh Jumal built a 20 year career. From Tad Hamilton to Transformers, Vegas. And everyone's like, damn, he's got three things you can name. That's fucking more than I would have guessed. Interesting thing about Tad Hamilton. Uh, that movie they work at at Piggly Wiggly. Yeah. In that 70s show, they refer to Piggly Wiggly several times That's as awesome. if they predicted he'd be in that movie. And also, they predicted that Fez would be in Chips, but that never actually happened. Right. So one of their predictions actually came true. That was about as interesting as when I saw Topher Grace on that Barstool podcast with that that just there's just those two girls who kept saying like I love Tad Hamilton. Tad Hamilton's a I good love movie. Tad I love Hamilton. Tad Hamilton. <laughs> and then they kept saying, "Oh my god, your wife's never seen that '70s show. Are you watching it? What is it that like? Does she like it? What are her thoughts on it? Oh my god, that's crazy. I used to watch it all the time. I watched it every. I watched it all the time. I love that show. I, yeah. And then and then Tougher Grace does the whole acting. How old are you? <laughs> like I guess that would be in your sweet spot. Yeah. Where I guess that would be like right. I get that right. We, we made it for you. The fucking David Spade when he's on a on part of my take and he's like how old are you guys there too well i guess yeah i guess time would be right for you guys like, shut the fuck up how about people just enjoy things don't be like oh it's in your sweet spot yeah it is really douchey to such say such a that. douchey thing to say hey guys if you're enjoying this podcast it's actually because it's just made right for your fucking sweet spot yep you're the exact target, you're the exact audience, target audience like yeah isn't that things like that isn't that just an, a given in general if someone's agreeing to partake in something it's because they're the target audience 
It's ridiculous. Yeah, it's dumb too, though, because like that, the people that were the target audience at the time were people his age. So the people that should like it theoretically currently still are people his current age. So exactly. how is that the sweet spot exactly? Would the sweet and spot also, change? Isn't he all then also implying that like, well, you're right, you like it now, but in fifty yeah, years, yeah, you're gonna fucking hate it. Now you'll hate it. You're gonna realize the dog shit that it is. No, that's so. Yeah, you're uh, you're s- 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 let's save your seventies trivia for never again. Okay. All right, we'll, we'll save it for the review episode. <laughs> yeah. Um. Oh my God. Yeah, that'll be fun when that version of you breaks out. When we try, to, when we start doing reviews of shows, and you'll just become like IMDb trivia the person. Did you actually know, Alex, that oh in this God. scene when yeah. they were filming this, they actually didn't like each other? It was actually hard for them wow. to get past this scene. That's interesting. Almost as if they were paid to do it and they did it successfully. That's crazy. well. After they came to agreements, they all though would come. One thing I love too. People are like. You know, it's crazy that these, it's such a good movie when these actors hated each other. I'm like, it's such a good movie when two people who are paid to act successfully acted. <laughs> That's pretty wild. Isn't that what every movie ever is? It's fucking ridiculous. They yeah, I guess you're right. each other and they were able to fake it. They were able, actually, they were able to fake the entire goddamn movie. I don't know, but then everybody on the, the flip side, everybody has to go, like, we just saw the Game of Thrones, like, you know, it's a shame we had to kill Joffrey, because Gleason's really, a, he's a great guy in real life, he's Again, such a sweet don't boy. don't understand that one either, it's like, <laughs> we all thought he was can the you guys separate shit. the art from the artist to an extent, or are you that fucking, you know, do you have that lack of identity where you need to just hold on for dear life? I think it's the latter. It's like, yeah, or, oh god, when I hear a person say, like, you know, uh, yeah, they called me a bitch in this scene, and then they apologized afterwards. It's like <laughs> I find for, that shit weird too. For re- again, for doing the job they were paid to do, they're sorrowful for. Mm. Yeah, I don't. I thought the either. whole entire point of acting was to get into the character and get into the scene. I didn't think it was to have these these backup notions where it's like, oh, I hope I don't offend them for the things that they read yesterday. That I was going to call them tonight. It's not, it's not spare the moment. So this next thing I'm going to say actually picks up immediately after what you just said, yeah. but it also kind of falls into that trivia spot again. Right. So I'm not sure if I let's should. Just see, let's just fuck with it. Let's let's see. Okay. See so if you can go three for three. The first right. two things were so good. It felt Should very we... bar stool. Nice. So when we were watching the Game of Thrones thing again. They talked about exactly what you just said, where Tywin was like Charles Dance was like, yeah, I kept apologizing to to um, what's Tyrion's real name? Peter. Peter Dinklage because it was just so mean what they had me saying to him. And it's like. No, they didn't have you saying anything. You're not anything saying to anything him. to him. <laughs> I don't understand the fucking lunacy. Like, no. Peter Dinklage knows you're not the saying these things. The character isn't Charles. It's Tywin. You're just the one doing it. He's a method actor, so he can't, he can't tell where one starts and the other ends. Actually, if that was the case, he should never able, He should be stuck in Tywin, and Tywin wouldn't care, so why is he apologizing? That's good. None of it makes sense. It's just them. I think it's just them. I just think, at the end of the day, there's not that much to talk about with acting. At the end of the day, it's you acting. Mm-hmm. So they're just making up other things to talk about. They're like, oh, yeah, I felt terrible about it. No, you didn't think twice about it because, again, you're being paid. That must be why they always say, like, oh, I had to work so hard even though I got to reach out for me because they're acting. There's nothing to talk about. It's like they make shit oh, up as I they go. It's such a struggle. I got lucky and made it. That's why they're all activists because they have nothing else to talk about. <laughs> yeah, you got to fill the fucking noise somehow. <laughs> you know, you see, the thing that's different about most people is some people have a good idea and they, they're able to fill out the good ones and the bad ones. He has one good idea every six years. That's why he's really latching on to yeah, this. That's why they really latch on. Yeah, that's <laughs> the difference between. <laughs> Whew, that's funny. Um, Thanks, man. Yeah, again, how, just how do we, though? So, some sort of, you know, Ed Harris type figure mm. in which. He's the guy, I guess more with Josh Jumal type, we've we changed it, you know, the Ted Hamilton type. That's how we spun off this entire thing. Dude, that's amazing. So the You're Josh Jumal level. type, which is, but, but then again, do I really want Josh Jumal without but Fergie? Hey, yeah, I was going to say Fergie might come that's over. The, no, not anymore. So, now right. we have to, no, so it's not Josh Jumal type. Now it's more of like, um, who's that guy in the 2000s who looked just like Josh Jumal and pretty much did like the exact same kind of movies? And I can't remember who it is right now. Um, I can't either because I know who you're talking about, but I always refer to that guy as not Josh Demol. I'm yeah. not sure if I know what that guy's actual name Who's, is. What movie would he be in? If one of those movies you think Josh Demol would be in, but he just didn't get the part for some reason. No, who is that oh, guy? I think he's in Buddy Games, actually. That's Josh Jamal. That, was not oh. even, that wasn't even an attempt. No, that that's was not funny. funny. It was pretty funny. I think he's in Transformers. That's also Josh Jamal. Oh, oh, it's the guy from Vegas. It's also Josh Jamal. And you know what, Rob? I would have at least appreciated if you could have been like, that's the guy from Save Haven. Or... That's the guy from Shotgun Wedding with Jennifer Lopez. <laughs> That's the guy from... But no, you're just repeating the movies I said earlier. Like, uh... No, you didn't say Vegas once, dude. That I was said, definitely original oh my thought. God, I can't you most definitely so did not say Vegas. Annoying. Yes, I fucking did. Alex, you never... No, you did not. Because then you would have broken out to some James Gunn impression. You would have did this whole fucking charade with it. You absolutely dude. did not ever mention fucking Vegas. When in Rome, man. Okay? Nice. 
And also, if anyone I would have been impersonating in that show, okay, it wouldn't even it would have been me talking about Nikki Cox and then talk about Jay Moore, and then talk about Jay Moore for a second, okay? So know who the fuck you're talking to. I wouldn't be talking about no Jimmy Conn. My point, my point was though, you proved that you would have been talking about I somebody. I mentioned it and already. It never happened, so Dude, we never talked the, about Vegas. I Vegas. hate the, you. It, you again, there's just nothing between the ears that you you get one good idea. You're like, ooh, I think I got Alex for a second. You never have me. I don't I think said I Vegas. have you. you. didn't. If you said Vegas, this conversation about Jay Moore would eventually happen. Gonna, and it didn't. You're looking dumber every second because again, this is pre-recorded. So everyone who's hearing it already knows. Like, wait, let me just rewind. Yeah, Alex at Vegas. Well, in this current moment, it's not pre-recorded. So it there's is no pre- way to you know, know for certain. I fucking said it exists. <laughs> therefore, it does. There's no way to know for certain. You want to know what heaven's like? <laughs> Try being God, okay? So this Ed Harris, Josh Dumal type. But again, who's this fucking Josh Dumal guy? It's the other guy. Do you think I can look? Do you think I can look up two thousands Josh Dumal lookalike? Maybe. And be like, maybe. Let's let's give it let's give it a look. See here, Josh Duhamel. Oh, you're thinking of that guy that's in that movie with um, Catherine Heigl, where they have to raise their friends' kids. Okay, they're showing me pictures of Timothy Olyphant, and that's not. I was going to see Timothy Olyphant, but no, they don't look not, alike. I know exactly who the fuck that is. One's a good actor, and one's with Fergie. <laughs> yes, they look very similar. But that's not what I'm confusing. One's a good it. actor. One wrote Buddy Games. I don't know if he wrote. It. I know he directed it though. I, I think, think he directed it, dude. I, guess I think it's just Josh something Jamal. crazy. For some reason, the fourth picture looking up for. <laughs> fucking Josh Jamal look alike is a picture of Leonardo DiCaprio and Eric Dane. Yeah, they kind of look. They kind of look alike. That's something. <laughs> that's something. You know, you can't say you didn't learn on this podcast. <laughs> well, that's been our mission to teach one new thing an episode. Taylor Kitsch does not look like Josh Jamal. John Knoxville also does not look like Josh Jamal. Did you spell look alike wrong? And they're showing pictures of Javier Bardem and Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Those two guys look alike. I don't know they look alike. Josh with, uh, Jamal is so famous and so well searched. <laughs> That 10 photos in, you have Javier Bardem and Jeffrey Dean Morgan, and not Josh Jamal. And the third photo of Josh Jamal lookalike was a picture of Josh Jamal and Fergie. Oh, really? Which, again... <laughs> well, here's the real test. If you type in Fergie, do you get pictures of Fergie, or do you get pictures of her and Josh Jamal? Maybe you have to type in Fergie to find the results of Josh Jamal. I think you probably get more search results for Fergie's boyfriend... <laughs> I think so, ...than too. you'd get for looking up his actual name. <laughs> There's some other actor, though, I'm forgetting, though, who was a bullshit actor in the exact same class. Not some of the old one who actually can get good movies and good roles and good shows and can be a working actor. The only other guy I can think of is that guy we can't stand from a Party Down and everything that Oh, my God. Yeah, Ryan, it's either done. Ryan Clarkson or Is that the guy you're thinking Jensen of? Because he Ryan gets something. Josh Jamal type roles. I fuck that guy. Kind of. The amount of times where like you, I'll throw on a trailer or I'll throw on a TV show and I'll throw on a movie and it's like I can't escape him. In, what does it say about me that the second he <laughs> said not to take the boat, I mean he's going to take the boat? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. What's it say about you? <laughs> you really hate that line. I fuck, yeah, I do hate that line. That's the most, I've never seen something so on the nose. And he's such a douche and everything. I watched that dumb fucking video of that point person, of that personality list dumbass talking about the failed uh, backdoor pilot for Gossip Girl mm-hmm. with the flashback episode of uh blake lively's hot mom in the 80s mm-hmm. and it's like look at this Kristen ritter's there fucking most forgettable actress of the 2000s britney <laughs> snow is there fucking that <laughs> asshole from the evil dead remake who was really annoying playing jane levy's older brother and kind of ruined the movie yeah, and they cast suck. an actual good lead that movie could have been the bomb because jane levy killed it yep and we already had that asshole who just decided to start reading pig latin and since he was already so dumb we couldn't have another dumb idiot we had to have someone who's at least again charming and charismatic I'd love to hear that. It was like people talk saying, like, yeah, man, I just, you know, I had to apologize afterwards for uh, cutting my tongue and opening the screen and scaring her. You know what I guarantee? I guarantee that Ryan guy, is that his name? Who? That guy from Yeah. Veronica oh, Mars. I that point. Hold on. So the asshole from the Evil Dead and all of them, like, oh, this is a, they got a whole cast of people here, right? Uh-huh. Kristen Ritter's amazing. And then it's like, guess who else is the friend here? Fucking, it's the fucking... What does it say about me that the second he's not touched the boat, I don't touch the boat guy. Ryan Clarkson or Ryan Jensen or whatever the fuck the guy from the league slash party down slash Veronica Mars slash fucking every TV show to ever be created slash show me your tits. Show me your tits. Every, every fucking guy, he's the worst. That guy is the worst. First, is Kristen Bell even in Gossip Girl besides the voice? Like, is there any more uh, of a connection to like get the him last into that show? Season in like the one scene. Wait, they were going to build an entire spinoff around him being in a show just because he knows her. Yeah, I know. That's fucking... Because he's pals with her and Dak Shepard. I wonder, I mean, I guess probably her first, but like him and Dak Shepard are like 
just blood brothers. Yep. It's insanity. The amount this guy's a fucking leech. I What's gar- his name? Ryan something. Ryan I, Clarkson. I guarantee no, he has Jensen? like a uh, "Here We Are Now" Veronica Mars podcast. <laughs> He's absolutely one of those fucking guys. What's hold on? What's his name? Ryan Hansen. I said Jensen and Clarkson. It was Hansen. I should have known. It was you Ryan Hansen of Veronica Mars Friday the Thirteenth. The He's in Friday the Thirteenth too. The movie I've been referencing this entire time. Oh, I'm sorry. You said, I, you, I heard Friday and just went Night Lights in my head. And apparently he was in G.I. Joe Retaliation. I knew he was in Friday. I missed that one. Sorry, Ryan. <laughs> I also missed the donor party, who invited them, A Million Little Things, Friendsgiving, Bless This. Because of course, because of course, in Stack Shepard had a TV show that only lasted fucking 26 episodes. Somehow, he's like, you got a part in there for me, buddy? <laughs> and you got to go play Matt in that show. For how many episodes? Only one. Oh. Thank God. At least he has some restraint considering Dick Casablancas was in 55 episodes of Veronica Mars. Dick Casablancas? Yes. His name's Dick Casablancas. Probably Richard, but Dick Casablancas. That's still a fake name. Maybe it's Richard. That's the worst name ever. You know what's a great show? You know, you know what cat doesn't get enough scratch? What? Fucking Ryan Hansen solves crimes on television. Is that a reality show? No, that was a scripted comedy show on YouTube Red. Wow. Two seasons, because one wasn't enough. <laughs> they were like, eight episodes doesn't tell the story. <laughs> He's at least 16, or they go like a full no, 16. Yeah, expanded they went, they, second they, they picked season. It up on the back, they actually picked up on a back 40. <laughs> we're trying to get the show to syndication. <laughs> we're really hoping, like, you know, What's that dumb puts show called? on. Huh? It's called Ryan Hansen what? Solves crimes on television. Could you imagine if that was syndicated, and you would just turn the TV back on TBS in the middle of the day getting reruns? <laughs> Fucking, in a world where Hollywood actors can partner up with real cops to solve crimes on their shows, right? A no-nonsense cop is forced to team up with an airheaded actor, Ryan Hansen, for his new YouTube premium crime reality show slash meta sitcom. I was going to say, well, it's so meta. It is so meta. What's really, really meta is that the picture for the thing, they only had a very limited budget, I guess, to promote the show because the promotional photo is a picture of Ryan Hansen looking taking a selfie of himself with his phone screen that has a picture of him smiling on the back of it Uh and his partner next to him Uh and then there's two billboards behind them Mm -hmm. of the same photo i'm looking at on the main photo that's sick it's actually really (laughs) fucking stupid it is really fucking stupid and why is it why is it why does it say ryan hansen solves crimes on television with an asterisk next to it because it's on youtube was it the punchline i think it's the punchline but they're like it's actually not television because it's on youtube red that's as meta as it gets dude having your title be meta See, that was an annoying... And I'm here's annoying. here's a funny one. Here's some self-awareness from Mr. Ryan Hansen. Ready? Mm-hmm. Apparently, Samira Wiley, his co-star, is an Emmy nominee. Mm-hmm. I'll take that at face value. <laughs> sure. <laughs> you want to Ryan Hansen's title is? Because that's not Emmy. I'm like, if, they, if I find out he has an, an Emmy and a primetime one at that, I may go postal. Uh-huh. But no, it says <laughs> Emmy watcher Ryan Hansen. That's so funny. That's who I am. I'm an Emmy watcher. That guy's really funny. He's really cool, man. Yeah, we're really we're shitting on him over here. He's actually got a great... He's got his finger on the pulse of humor. Hey, man. Fucking, he's always like, um... He's always like, uh... What, 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 he's always like, uh... What does it say about me that if I, uh... <laughs> <laughs> and the second he said not to take the boat, I was gonna take the boat. Or he's like, oh, yeah, uh... I don't know what ordinary people is. It's the fucking movie with the guy's brother who dies. <laughs> like, Jesus fucking Christ, Ryan Hansen. What an idiot. The only line I know is "Show me your tits," and I show me your tits. I, I don't know. Show I don't know as many lines as uh, your, yours. I'm actually a really big fan of the guys. If you can't tell, clearly, I'm, uh, clearly obviously I'm, we are. If you watch everything watching. he's in, it's he's also in Friends with Benefits, which we forgot to mention. The TV show, not the movie. The TV show. No, not no. He's in fucking Bad Teacher. The TV show. I thought. No, he's, he's in, in both. Show. He's in both. I'm pretty sure he's in Bad Teacher. Also, that's wild. He's in every TV show ever made for at least one episode appearance. Yes, yeah, insane. Of the first off, 92 credits is actually a lot. I mean, right here, look at this TV show, Grandfather. Again, that show only lasted 22 episodes. He was <laughs> yeah, yeah how one. is he? This guy's disgusting. Andy He's just a leech. Becca for an episode. That only lasted, what, two 40. seasons? Portlandia for an episode. Santa Clarita Diet. The Mindy Project. 12 of Two Bro Girls. I forgot. I think, that's where I, I think that's where I first officially fucking hated him was Two Bro Girls, come to think of it, where he played Andy. And he was Beth Burr's boyfriend, and he was just so fucking annoying. And they had the audacity. It was, again, it was one of those things where they're like, yeah... Look, at, she should be the one who's like, damn, look how fine he is. I guess what really broke me on him. I'm like, guys, this is, this is fucking Dick Casablancas, okay? <laughs> <laughs> fucking calm down. <laughs> He's in, 
Resident Advisors. Oh my god, I can't remember that show. Wasn't that the dumb Hulu? Show? Yep, seven episodes of seven, starring King Batch, fucking genius. Wow, King Batch, Jamie Chung, Ryan Hansen. This guy will attach himself to anybody to get I some kind of he, fucking he, role. He must be a fucking. He just claws He's his way parasite. through Hollywood. He's in one of the iZombie. Thirteen of Bad Judge. You want to know who did iZombie? The guy did Rock and That show. Which one? Bad Judge. He was in all 13 episodes. Was Kate Walsh was like, I need Ryan Hansen to accompany me on this vehicle. She's like, there's only one actor out there who has the kind of comedic Bad chops. teacher, 13 episodes. Yep, and he's definitely in the show I said he was in. He's in House of Lies for an episode. I forgot. There's that scene where Kristen fucking Bell's in Kristen it, right? Bell's like, hey, you want, I have to film a sex scene. Ryan, you in? Don't ask your husband. No, exactly. Who also is in the industry. The League for two episodes. <laughs> Burning Love for... What is Burning Love? This show, oh my God, Ken Marino. Fuck, dude. This guy just has so many friends. He must be the nicest guy in the world, really. He gets so many jobs with these people over and over again. Yeah, it's kind of ridiculous. He doesn't have to do anything. He also, just gets the roles. Ken Marino is hot. <laughs> fucking, I'm watching the trailer for this. This is like a fucking, like, he's jacked. Really? He's playing a fireman. It's a parody of reality dating show in the vein of The Bachelor and The Bachelorette with Ken Marino called Burning Love. Lasted 36 episodes. It's Michael Ian Black, Ken Marino, Ryan Hansen, and again, Michael Ian Black and Ken Marino is the guys in Reaper. They're and they're in fucking and Paul. Oh my god! And Paul Rudd fucking did Wet Hot American Summer with Ken Marino and the other guys in it too. They're both in. They're both in Wet Hot American Summer, and then Paul Rudd does the fucking TV show, and then Ryan Hansen is in that show with this guy from that show. You just said this the other day. It's literally it's everybody just knows everybody. Cold dude. They're a part of that fucking owl in the woods thing for sure. (laughs) Look at dude. Would you suspect that Ken Marino looked at Jack Hansen? Hanson. Let me click on the show again. Look at this, dude. This is ridiculous. I don't know no one can but hear this. This is a silence. Just check out. Don't, no, don't even commentate. Just look how Jack Camerino is. Oh, damn. I know. Damn, he's looking good. Good for him, man. 2012 was a good year. That was like a pointer, though, not a reality Yeah, that didn't TV look like a real show. show at all. It also had the woman, Quint- the woman who he was kissing in that one scene. It was also a porn star? No, June Diane Raphael, who I think is married to, like, Andre... From the league. Oh, that chick? The one who he made out with in Party Down where he was like yep. falling over the girl. Yeah, she's married. Yeah, that's Andre's wife. Like, what the fuck? This is I so know. weird. And Andre's in every Everything. goddamn thing. And he's and also in the league. And they're on dumb fucking pet hospital show. Yep. This is insane, man. We're It feels like we're journalists on the Yeah, we're, we're, right yeah we're on the this fucking the seedy underbelly Wait a second. Do you realize he also knows... Exactly. We're undercovering shit, man. He was in two episodes of The Wedding Band. The show only has 10 episodes. He managed again. That's hilarious that they had a... I remember the trailer for that show. Remember Brian Austin Green's TBS, The Wedding Band? Yep, he's in that too? Yeah, two episodes. That's only lasted 10. That's crazy. That's so funny. That's such a weird show. It's got Ryan Hansen. He's in Hansen. Of Parenthood? Oh, my brain blocked that. He's in season four episode 12 of Parenthood. Oh my God, he hits on Monica Potter. <laughs> That's awesome. Good for him. Yeah, good for him. Friends of Benefits, 13 episodes. Yep. This is insane. I, fig- I, I understand why he exists. I figured it out. You know how like in uh, Wes Craven's A New Nightmare... He has to keep making Freddy Krueger movies while it's Freddy Krueger, the actual spirits, going to like rain hell on the world. Right. Apparently, some we made some deal with some deity, you know, uh, 50 years ago, right around this time, Ryan Hansen was probably born. And it was just like. You think Ryan Hansen's, dude, <laughs> hold on a second. How old is this guy? Because I'm still, for some reason in my head, he's still 22 years old. Well, he was 22 40 years ago. So. For, no, for the last 40 years, he was. He's 41? Dude. Okay, so 50 was close. I swear to God, if he's off. acting the same. I haven't watched Party Down in season three yet. If he's still doing that, bro, at 41, it might be either the worst thing I've ever seen or the funniest thing. I might come to love the guy again. We made some deal or some pack with some deity where you have to keep putting him in projects deity. constantly. I said deity. Didn't I? No. Well, you didn't say anything about Vegas either. So now we're Yeah, Again, okay? you know, Robbie, for a second, the people were listening to the episode and they forgot about how dumb you were thinking you were right. And the fact that now you've waited 10 minutes and you still hold on to that sediment. And when the fact that you're just objectively wrong and they're going to hear the episode and hear me say Vegas, you're just making you're another nail in the coffin. Well, I feel like... I feel, uh, You're that Ryan Reynolds movie where he was in a coffin. All right, man? Nice. What were you going to say? Oh, I was going to say, I feel like Charlie Day connecting the dots now because I made the co- the connection to the deity with fucking Ryan Hansen mm-hmm. and then Ryan Hansen's in everything and you said it's about the cult with the, the owl. Yeah. The owl must have something to do with that deity that raised so, Ryan Hansen in the first place. So he's a, he's a we figured out the you're cult. he's a demon. Yeah, we figured out the entire cult that's under that's r- ruling Hollywood right now. Now, that would have been a meta fucking movie to make instead of some dumb fucking solving crimes TV show. Mm-hmm. He should have made something where he recognized. Well, that would have been season lack- three. He, they didn't get should, the third season. Have been like, no, it wouldn't have been. <laughs> no. He should have had the fucking, you know, I don't know, um, understanding of the world and reality to be like, I'm a fucking douchebag. And I'm way too successful for how douchey I am. <laughs> so, how do I turn the page and make the. How do I flip the script? 
per se, and really lean into this thing, right? Mm-hmm. What he should have done is made it, made, made it where he was playing himself and the movie opened up on him going out for auditions, right? Mm-hmm. He's going out for Reed and he's, he keeps getting these, you know, he's getting these parts, but they're not the right parts and he's not getting any real leading vehicles. And he's kind of just a guy in an ensemble. He's, he's getting paid and he can't complain. He's, you know, people getting paid less and blah, 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 right? Build a character. Like 30 minutes of this, just nothing's even happening, mm. okay? And then he gets a part, right? Mm. And it's kind of a big part. He's like, whoa, this is, this is like a real part, right? And then he ends up realizing that the only reason he's getting these parts at all is because there's this cult that formed around him, mm. right? That, where he was like originally a baby who was like like a st- like something where like his mother was like she was running and she had so him. He's and born they, innocently. He's yeah. <laughs> this was bestowed upon him. Something yeah, like a prophecy of a way in which it was some like sort of weird sex cult, fucking you know, some like he's real, a tragic origin. They're story. wearing fucking like you know these giant robes and they have like uh, these big almost staffs. Like, yeah, big staffs like a staff and like you know. These beautiful, intricate, like Catholic, Catholic fucking torches, where it's like, mm. like gold all over the place. And it's like they're in this amazing, like yeah, this is like an incense of burning exactly. everywhere. It's a real religious phenomena for him to be born. They have that thing that swings on the chains that just everything yeah, yeah. spritzes water or yep. whatever. Yep, yep. It's a whole entire thing. They have a giant. They're they're doing human sacrifice, of course. You know, well, they're chanting. Given, they're doing like some weird fucking locking of arms swing. And they're all wearing right. animal heads. Exactly. Different animals of different representation. Yeah, yeah, they have bones lying around. They're doing. They're eating fucking like they're draining blood from cows and shit. Crazy stuff, right? <laughs> That's what he's born into. They have it where he's like born into some stone thing, so they can have like lightning strike, and they have it where like it has uh, indentate engravings or you know etches into the fucking stone, so like they can they kill like a fucking they kill the horse his father rode, and the bleed the blood runs down. Like, yeah, and it goes in that for, exact pattern in the thing to form around him, and it lights up, which gold. forms a symbol yeah, exactly. <laughs> and that's why he has this weird birthmark he's always been so scared about, right? <laughs> and then he discovers that they've become more powerful with the more career success he's had. Uh-huh. Which is how now they're actually running Hollywood where they're able to give him an actual like, major motion picture. Mm-hmm. And the entire thing is to have it where he's like, you know, because every time that they, he got more and more part, they're able to get more and more influence and more because they're, they're, this is all in, they're all, these are, these are mere mortals paying to a, to a ancient demon, right? Mm-hmm. From hell. Obviously. So they're like doing sacrifice to him. Every time he gets to parts because they're actually killing someone and everything else, right? Mm-hmm. And it turns out that Kristen Bell and Dax Shepard are just handlers, okay? <laughs> they're not, they're, that they they're don't like him at all. Exactly. They're like that's the top why they're of the always with their them. parents. Both, they're founding the, members. No, yeah, both that sets of founding members. These are their kids who are the legacies who make, really they run Shepherd the cult and now. Kristen Bell were put together. So they, didn't, Ma- they didn't meet each like, other. They were literally, put together. Veronica Mars was created only to have her be the lead to give him a little bit of. A star power. She was supposed up. to be his one day bride, you know. And Dick Casablancas is actually one of those things where it's an anagram. If you spin it around, it's actually the like Galak. It's the fucking name of the demon or whatever. Okay, so then it has it where he ends up like doing this entire thing where he gets the big motion picture. He becomes a star. Goes for like twenty years of him actually being a superstar, and then it gets to the point where he's like you know like Michael Douglas Liberace big, right? Uh, we haven't, we haven't gotten there the just riches. yet, though. Exactly, he has all the riches, and that's when it ends, ends like that's when the apocalypse actually starts. And it turns out he's actually the Antichrist. Christ. Mm. And the entire power is like everyone watching him to be tricked into thinking he was a star so they'd follow him and he's actually the Antichrist and Rachel's hell. <laughs> That's my Ryan Hansen meta project. But, but you know, you know what? And he, at the he, very he, he end, his catchy at the very phrase. end, when you know the, 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 the devil comes up and the devil the devil like you know rises through him and he's his father and the son and everything else, uh-huh. he's the devil's like, alright, just don't fucking touch my boat. And then it cuts and he's driving in a fucking Escalade. And he's like, what does it say about me? That the second he said not to touch the boat, I was immediately going to touch the boat. <laughs> <laughs>